going straight into the ground. There's your trail master. There's your kindling ready. Sound of that wood clinking just gives me wood. <laughs> more small pieces. The five millimeters thick helps you do this nasty super seed. You can see with that sharpened swedge, turn off the baton, but not a huge deal. Might carve a scoop or something with those pieces. There we go.
a little bit of that choil with the uh, forward guard there. Getting some decent curls. back there. Okay, this is a nice uh, Fiskars uh, pruning saw. It's an aggressive cut, 21 inch bow saw. This thing is great. Like, found it for 10 bucks at Lowe's. So, hopefully, you find this at Canadian Tire, etc. But this is a great, a great saw. little go with the trail master before I send it off and give it to a friend. Packing branches like butter. Fighting deep. Want it to be the one tool option but as you can see it definitely does a good job that's why we bring a cross cutting saw Chattering about. Yeah, keep this one up at the time. Kindle 
bend away. Just keep going with the big stuff. I know, we're done soon, kid. Take a quick break. So we got a bunch of stuff here on the table. Um, not here to talk about that stuff though. Here to talk about this bad boy. He just saw some outdoor use on this uh, legendary blade. Should call it the Trail King, not just the Trail Master. Uh, that's just coconut oil lathered onto the blade. Uh, gonna be sending this to a friend, so just getting it. A thick coating for transport as you can see obviously there is a deep multi-layered patina on it you can go with multiple layers on patina and there's uh, 
chemical products out there you can use to uh, acid etch a blade. You can also use that to get rid of the patina if you don't like it. And you could even sand it away and restart the patina. But either way, this is the 01 version of the Trailmaster. I can't wait to see if I could ever get my hands on a 3V version that's coming out from GSM. Uh, this is such a great classic blade. Very good contender with, you know, the Ontario RTAC 2, SE Hungless, and many other large blades. But uh, this is just so simple and so great. Kind of like a SRK, it's just a plank of steel has been sharpened. And it's so simple in the design, but that's why it's so easy and great to use. So you have a nine and a half inch blade here. 14 inches overall. It weighs 18 ounces, so just over a pound. You got this gorgeous brass guard. And you got this kind of almost a coffin-shaped handle. It, 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 does, it does have a bit of a flare going from the hilt and then skinnies down the middle, flares at the back. You do have a bit of a palm swell there, which is nice. You got just this horizontal ribbing on the top and the bottom and then you got this really nice uh like kind of beehive hexagonal pattern it's the perfect amount of being grippy but still squishy enough and smooth that it doesn't over exert and tire your hands you got this big choil portion here which you can see a bit of the ricasso let's see oh one high carbon taiwan Well, it was gone from that side from acid and the patina, etc. But uh, five millimeters thick. Uh, this is a batoning and chopping beast. The only thing I'd say is that the uh, swedge here, if you had some time on a belt or even stones or files, uh, this thing is sharp. It, it will chew through a baton and you could sharpen that to be a secondary edge to, you know, enhance its fighting capabilities. So you've seen it chop, seen it baton, very heavy and awkward for food prep, but it does do a good job at that as well. Um, I got two sheaths here. This is just a, you know, slap together from a friend. Uh, it's very nice. It's left side, carry dangler style leather sheath. So it's, it's nice, simple, easy to extract in and out. Uh, I really like the secure sheath that it comes with. You can take off that belt loop if you don't want it, and you can replace it with a tech lock for a horizontal, diagonal, or up and down position. And there's so many aftermarket accessories you could slap on, like other little, um, you know, like ferro rod holsters could go on top of this. Uh, you could do an SE survival tin mounted onto there. You'd probably fit two on there if you really wanted. You could also, um, what was I going to say? Yeah, if you check my mods that I did before, put a small Maxpedition pocket organizer on there, and you could zip tie it on. Then you have your survival kit that will fit on the sheath with your knife. Uh, the retention is great because it's molded to this brass guard. And you got that nice drainage hole there. As you can see, there's no big warpage or anything. No cracks. This thing's been in the snow in the super cold out in the woods uh, the blade itself with all the chopping hacking batoning as you can see it's holding a great edge no big uh, chips or dings or anything like that some parts are sharp some parts are a little bit more dull but uh, this Owen high carbon is very easy to touch up in the field so trailmaster you can still find these on the secondary market and maybe some online retailers still have a few left but since the switch it'll be hard to get they're being pumped out in 3v now so they'll be very expensive i think it was what maybe 500 canadian or so for a 3v trailmaster since i looked but uh one day we'll get one but yeah it's just such a great classic you can find them, just check Kijiji, check Craigslist. They'll pop up on eBay on occasion. Check the forums, etc. And overall, just a pretty decent knife.
So take care guys. I hope you enjoyed the video and the test and I'll see you later.